Scott Satterfield and four Bearcats players speak today at Big 12 Media Days. I've got three thoughts on each of them on today's episode of Locked On Bearcats. You are Locked On Bearcats, your daily podcast on the Cincinnati Bearcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Lockdown Bearcats part of your everyday listening. Maybe it's your first listen today. If so, we thank you very much for making us your first listen every day. My name is Alex Frank, your host of Lockdown Bearcats. It's part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. We're free and available wherever you listen to podcasts. We're also available on YouTube. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow us to get an alert every time that we drop a new episode. The Bearcats are in Dallas, AT&T Stadium. Big 12 Media Days continue today. They started yesterday. The Bearcats are up today at AT&T Stadium. I know that Neil Meyer from the front office news is there. He's doing a fantastic job with coverage. If you haven't checked out Neil Meyer's work, highly recommend that he's been a guest, excuse me, on this show before. He will be throughout the season. As we gear up, for what is going to be an absolutely fantastic ride over these next however however long it's going to be. But Media Days, excuse me, apologies for my allergies. I don't know what is up with them, but Media Days are today. And I, this is an exciting time. And yes, the Bearcats were picked to finish 13th. But from what I've listened to recently, and I, I listened to, that clip with Chad Brendel being interviewed by Tom Brenneman. I listened to Dan Horde on the In the Trenches podcast with Dave Lapham, which you have, if you haven't checked out that podcast, I highly recommend it. It is a fantastic podcast, hosted by a fantastic broadcaster and Dave Lapham. So Dan Horde was on with Dave, and I just call him Dave. I feel like no one calls him Dave, it's Lap. But Dan basically said that Scott Satterfield is cutting edge, and there's one exclusive stat that stands out to me. Going into this season, there's a lot of question marks. There's still some skepticism. There's still some uncertainty. I truly believe that it's going to be a better season than what some of you than what some of you might think. And most people I talk to, including Neil, believe that. And there's one exclusive stat that gives me the confidence that this is going to be a really successful first season for the Cincinnati Bearcats in the Big 12 and Scott Satterfield. And I say that because Scott Satterfield, in his four years of Louisville, the Cardinals were the only program in college football over the last four seasons to average 200 yards both passing and rushing per game. That's pretty good. And when you look at the Big 12 stats from last year, and I know we spent a lot of time this offseason – hammering home those numbers. The teams who were really good, even TCU, they were not an aerial all-out passing team. Them and Kansas State, did I word that correctly? TCU and Kansas State got to the Big 12 championship game on the heels of a dynamic offense, meaning that they did both running and passing well, and defense. Now, Kansas State was the best defensive team in the Big 12. There's a reason why they're picked to finish in the top five of the preseason media poll. But I look at what these two teams, or I'm sorry, I look at what the Bearcats have. And I said earlier this week, they're going to be able to run the football better this year. I say that the Bearcats are going to be good because of the scheme Scott Satterfield is going to deploy. I say that because I believe in the players that they have. Scott Satterfield is a player is a players than plays kind of coach. And that's really good to have if you're the Cincinnati Bearcats. I firmly believe that Scott Satterfield is going to have a great culture and a really competitive team this year. Because I just can't see the Bearcats after being picked to finish 13th. And the amount of the amount of great players, great people off the field, and the competitors that they are that they're going to settle for 13th place. They may finish in 10th or 9th or somewhere in that vicinity. But to say they're going to finish second to last, I'm not buying that. Scott Satterfield 
is walking into the most stable environment he's ever walked into as a head coach. He's been with Appalachian State. He was with Louisville. And both those places, for as good of a job as he did at both places, that was not the best environment to walk into. In terms of where they were, Power 5, in terms of a lot of things, Scott Satterfield is walking into a very, very good situation. Power 5, resources, a great athletic department, a great fan base, a great roster. I don't know if it's great, but it's good. I think it's really competitive. This is go- this, he is walking into an incredible situation. The Cincinnati Bearcats are going to be a really competitive team this year because they have the players who have been here before, the experienced players, and the players going to the media days, who will, you will hear from today. Emory Jones, Deshaun Pace, Jawan Briggs, Dante Corleone. All four of those players. Three of them have been here for at least three years each. Or I'm sorry, was Corleone on the 21 roster? Now I'm... But all of them have played at least a season with the Bearcats. Deshaun Pace has been here for three. Briggs got here in 21. Corleone burst on the scene last year. And then you look at Emory Jones, who's going into his sixth season of college football. And yeah, he hasn't played all of those seasons, but he is still experienced. That's why I said Ben Bryan last year being experienced. I don't care if he only had one season of starting under his belt or not. He had knowledge. Emory Jones has knowledge. Whether or not that translates to success on the field is still to be determined. But I still believe that this Bearcats team, given Scott Serrafield's cutting edge, which is what Dan Horde talked about on that podcast with Lap. Given that Scott Satterfield is, excuse me, innovative, given that there is a good enough roster, it wasn't completely gutted. In some positions it was, wide receiver, offensive line, but in some areas it was not. And the area that it was not was the defense. We're going to get to that in, we're going to get to that in the third segment today. But the, if you have to rebuild the offense, you might as well have an offensive-minded head coach. And that's who Scott Satterfield is. And that's why Louisville's offense was so successful with him. And you go back and you watch any of those, any of those games over, the, over those four seasons. And I get it. They weren't really all that great after 2019. But you also don't go from 2-3 and three to 7-5 and five without a great head coach. And that was with an injured quarterback in Malik Cunningham. So again... The exclusive stat that only applies to Scott Centerfield and Louisville, averaging 200 yards rushing and passing per game over the last four seasons. The fact that he's walking into a great environment, the best environment he's ever walked into, and the fact that they're, and I, I wrote down three things, and everywhere he has gone, he's rebuilt a program or he's elevated it, and the fact that there aren't any expectations, I think fits right into his wheelhouse. I, I I still maintain this to this day. And I can't wait to ask Neil this next week and Russ when he gets back from his extravaganza over in Europe. And everybody that I see on the Bearcats beat, I can't wait to ask them. Do you still think that you're that we're going to be pleasantly surprised by what this Bearcats team is going to do? Because I feel that way. All right, coming up. We're going to talk about Emory Jones. He's the only offensive player going to Big 12 Media Days. That's fine. I'm going to share three thoughts about him, including, well, there's three questions I have about Emory Jones, and I'll share with you what those three questions are next on Locked On Bearcats. Today's episode of Lockdown Bearcats is brought to you by FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. 
That's 200 you can spend betting everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to the hit the first home run, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, an official partner of Major League Baseball. Thank you so much for making Locked On Bearcats your first listen of every day. For everyday listeners, on next week's shows, we are going to recap media days. What Scott Centerfield, Emory Jones, Deshaun Pace, Juwan Briggs, Dante Corleone said. And then we are going to get into eventually position group previews. My ranking of the roster. Every player on the Bearcats roster, I'm going to rank them all the way to the number one player. Not sure how I'm going to do it yet either by best player or most valuable player. So that is going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to that with all of you. And then we are, before you know it, we are into the season. Hard to believe, 51 days away. And so starting that Monday, August the 28th, August 28th, that that is game preview week. So that means a whole bunch of things. So, and that's when the shows write themselves. But we'll try to vary them for diversity as we march into the 2023 season. Emory Jones is going to speak at media day today. By the way, if you want to know the schedule for watching purposes, planning purposes, the Bearcats are on Thursday. And the Cincinnati Bearcats, so basically there's a set on ESPNU. And Scott Satterfield is going to be on that set from 10.15 to 10.30. The players will follow at 10.30 through 10.40. Then there's a press conference on the field that you won't be able to see on ESPNU, I don't think. At least what I'm gathering here. So Scott Satterfield goes from 10.35 to 10.50. And then the breakout schedule, there are, there are plenty of breakouts. The Bearcats will visit photo players only. They'll go to Big 12 Social and Digital, Fox Room 1, Fox Social, ESPN, BYU TVs there, CBS Sports, LHN, Longhorn Network, Sirius XM, Kid Reporter Program, ESPN.com, Coaches, and then Live Radio. Plus, you've got, I mean, the Bearcats are going all over the place. There's a whole schedule for every team in the breakouts. So, a lot happening today. By the way, the other programs, the other um, seven bro- the other six programs who are there today, Kansas State, led by head coach Chris Kleiman, the reigning champions, UCF, fellow newcomer led by Gus Malzahn, Texas Tech and head coach Joey McGuire, West Virginia head coach Neil Brown, Iowa State, led by head coach Matt Campbell, Oklahoma with head coach Brent Venables. BYU and Houston went yesterday, of course, led by Dana Holgerson of Houston and then Kalani Sataki at BYU. You. So that means Texas, Oklahoma State, Baylor, Kansas, and TCU all won yesterday. So, uh, and, by, and by the way, this is the only season that, that you're going to have 14 teams in the Big 12, which I, I think is going to be really exciting. I mean, the Bearcats have not been in a conference that big since they were in the Big East when it had 16 teams in basketball. But I, I, I think with Emory Jones, and I kind of went off, I kind of got off, sidetracked a little bit. But with Emory Jones, I think what I want – there are three questions I have. Yesterday I mentioned the five things he needs to do to be successful. Well, I've got three questions for him. How much is he going to really elevate this offense? Because – and the answer is I don't know. And the answer is I don't know because of two things. One, because I don't know how great the offensive line is going to be. Really, three things. Number two, I don't know what the receiving core is going to look like. And number three – is I don't know how great of a quarter I don't know how good of a quarterback he is. I've heard that he's dual threat. I've seen he's dual threat based on the numbers that I've seen. But until you see him in a game situation, you really don't know what you're going to get. And that's why there's a that, that's a question mark. Now, he's it's same same with Satterfield. He's walking into a very stable environment where you sense a culture. And Florida and Arizona State. He was there when those programs were headed towards 
firing their head coaches. So I look at what I look at what Scott Satterfield is going to be able to do with Emory Jones. I'm not saying Jones is going to turn into the second coming of Malik Cunningham, but I am saying he's going to be maybe better than you think. And here, he, for what it's worth, if Emory Jones throws for let's say uh, 200 yards per game, he gets to 2400, and he rushes for 32. 60 yards a game. That's three to six first downs that you get. That's good. I mean, that, that that can, that adds up over the course of a 12 game season. That means you're going from anywhere from 360 to 480, which is really good. And so I think if you are, if you're the Bearcats and if you're a fan and you're concerned about Emory Jones, that's fine. Because Emory Jones, we don't know much about him other than that he has played a lot of college football. He's been around a lot of college football, and that's all good. But again, how much is he going to really elevate this offense? And the second question is, what are we going to get? Are we going to get a quarterback who's inaccurate? Are we going to get a quarterback who can't throw the deep ball? Are we going to get a quarterback who doesn't make good decisions? Are we going to get a quarterback who's timid in the pocket? Are we going to get a quarterback who can make plays off script? Are we going to get a quarterback who, who is, uh, is he erratic? Is he a leader on the field? Is he a leader off the field? Is he someone that you can rely on to go win you a game that you need to win? The games you need to win and the games that you don't, that you aren't really expected to win, but Maybe you can win. And I think that there is something to that. If you're the Cincinnati Bearcats, <coughs> excuse me, there are games on this schedule. There are games on this schedule that they're going to win. EKU, Miami, Iowa State, and Baylor, West Virginia. That's five. Kansas, I would say, too. There are enough games on the schedule that they're going to win that's going to give them the opportunity to get to a bowl game. And that, and that is the ultimate goal of this season, realistically. With Emory Jones, you hope he doesn't have to do too much to help the Bearcats win games. If he, if he has to, that tells you the offensive line is not cohesive. That tells you the running game is as dormant as it was at times last year. And it did get better over the last two games of the season. But there were times last year where the Bearcats could not run the football. They couldn't run the football at Arkansas. They could not run the football against UCF. They could not run the football against Louisville. Are they going to be able to do that this year against Big 12 defenses? No, Big 12 defenses aren't SEC or Big 10, but they're still really, really good. And I think about the Cincinnati Bearcats and the situation they're in. And I think about Emory Jones. I want him to be a quarterback who just adds something, not someone who has to carry the offense. How many times have we seen Russell Wilson do that in his career with the Seahawks and now with the Broncos? He had to be the guy. He had to be 100% the guy. How many times... Have we seen, did we see Joe Burrow early on in his career? He was, he was given an incredible amount of responsibility to that offense. If you have a running game, Tom Brady had to be that way last year. I think there, there was a game last year. The Buccaneers played the Chiefs. And I, I, I don't know if this is still true, but there was so and my point here is if if the bearcats can't run the football that is going to spell massive trouble if you are if you're the bearcats because that's going to put too much pressure on emory jones and he hasn't proven himself to be the guy who can do that at quarterback by the way that game against tampa bay last year uh or or kansas city the buccaneers only had Six rush attempts for 
They had 388 total yards. They had six rush attempts for three yards. Kansas City, in contrast, had 37 rush attempts to 189. Brady was literally the offense that day. Now, he did throw for 385 yards, but the Chiefs, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, had 92 rushing yards, and Isaiah Pacheco had 63. See the more balanced offense the Chiefs had? And you look at that, that's what I want to see from the Bearcats. A balanced offense. Scott Sarfield had that in Louisville last year, in the last four years. So we should see that again this year. All right. Up next, let's get to the defense. The strength of this team. If we know anything about the Cincinnati Bearcats, is that their strength lies in where it has lied for previous years. That next, Unlocked on Bearcats. The Cincinnati Bearcats defense is going to be really good this year once again. And also because Brian Brown, their new defensive coordinator, was wicked good at Louisville last year. Ranked in the top 25 in several statistical categories. He is, as Dan Horn said, a rising name in college football. In college football coaching. So Deshaun Pace is going to media days. I'm really happy about that. I think he's a leader on this team. He's a hometown hero. He's from Colerain High School. I mean, he's going to be one of the key players to this year's team. Number two, will he boost his stock this year? And I say that because he's going to be a face of this defense. And if he continues to have the success that he's had over the last two years, now last year was a down year, which for multiple reasons, one being his brother Ivan was was carving up the stat sheet. Will Deshaun Pace raise his stock enough this year to have the opportunity to go pro next year? This is his fourth season. So he can come back for 2024. But will he boost his stock enough to do that? You kind of hope he does for him, but you kind of hope that he doesn't enough so he can come back in 2024 when a lot of things will be set in place. Number three, and this is, (coughs) excuse me, this is big. Can he fill the void left behind by Ivan? And Ty Van Fossen. He's the guy at linebacker. Now, yeah, the Bearcats have Dorian Jones, and they have Daniel Greshik. They did go out and get some guys in the transfer portal, but all I'm saying to you is it's Deshaun's linebacker room. He's got to be the guy. He's got to be the guy that fills in, that, that, that continues what Ivan did last year. Can he get after the quarterback? Can he make plays in coverage? He's going to be backing up, though, a very good defensive line. So maybe he won't have to do a whole lot. Jawan Briggs. It's really interesting. He's experienced. He's been around college football for a very long time. He had a really good season last year, a breakout season. Dante uh, Jawan Briggs is going to have the opportunity to be a very key player. On this year's on this year's team, even though he's playing in Dante Corleone's shadows, it does kind of feel that way. But he will bring experience. Does he take another step this year? The one thing about Jawan Briggs is he's going to be on more team scouting reports this year because he got a lot of exposure last year when Malik Van went down. I'm surprised Malik Van is not going to media days. He's another hometown hero. But when I think about Briggs and he did have a, a, a season last year where he really he really um, stepped up his game. Juwan Briggs and Cincinnati. So we look at his career. He's played five seasons. He had 19 tackles in 19, 20 in 2020, 42 in 21, 60 last year. He had three sacks last year. He's had three sacks in each of the previous three seasons. So there definitely is something to work with here. But when you're playing in the shadows of Dante Corleone, you're only going to be sometimes you're able to do so much. And if you are, then, you know, as long as he is contributing and is not a liability, that's what I want to see from Jawan Briggs. And then I think about Dante Corleone. Dante Corleone and, and 
Can Briggs improve on 60 sa- 60 tackles this year? Sure. You're going to have more opportunities. You're not playing in a 3-3-5. You're playing a 4 2 5 So there's more down linemen defensively on the edge for Cincinnati. Dante Corleone, a dominant player that you're wondering, how can he get better? Last year, he was so dominant. Highest graded defensive player by Pro Football Focus. Can he possibly get better? He can. How does he adjust to the Big 12? Do opposing offensive lines have tendencies or adjustments to who he is? I think that the Bearcats are still going to be really good defensively. But the Big 12 is a lot more dynamic than the American was. Is Dante Corleone prepared enough to take on Big 12 offensive linemen? He's the key to stopping the run. You look at the Big 12 last year and some of the numbers that they put up, which are really good offensively. The Big 12 has always been known for their offense. But you look at what the Bearcats had or, or the, the Big 12 had last year. In the Big 12 last year, you had, let's see, two teams average over 200 yards rushing, including Kansas State. Then you had seven or six teams average 150 or more rushing yards a game, including TCU 193.3, Kansas at 188.2, or I'm sorry, Texas at 188.2, Kansas at 183.5, Baylor at 182.4. lot to work with there. So there is tremendous ability to run the football in the Big 12. You're going to have to find a way to slow it down. Dante Corleone is the key to stopping the run. I really think that this Bearcats defense is still going to be good. I think they're, I think they're going to be a, a defense that's opportunistic. I think they're going, to win the, they're going to win games by forcing turnovers. And I think you can do that in the Big 12 because – if you have a secondary who can make plays, because they will air the ball out, teams in the Big 12, that's what's going to lead you to wins. But again, the strength of this team is the defense. And so long as Emory Jones doesn't lose you games as opposed to winning you games, that's going to be the key in the Big 12. And if you're Scott Satterfield, the environment that you're walking into, the exclusive club that you are a part of, only you are a part of, This is going to be, I think, a really good season for the Cincinnati Bearcats. In terms of success, in terms of proving a lot of people wrong, this is why I think Cincinnati has a chance to surprise a lot of teams and a lot of media members in the Big 12. We'll find out what's said today at Big 12 Media Days. We'll break it all down for you next week here on Locked On Bearcats. Have a fantastic weekend. The Reds are back in town. Tomorrow through Sunday against the Milwaukee Brewers, they're up by one game. If they take one, they're guaranteed to be tied at the end of the series. I mean, heck, if they take two, they're going to be up by at least two games. So there is a lot at stake in this series. A 10-game homestand beginning tomorrow against the Brewers. And the Bengals training camp is slowly coming closer. James Rapine and Jake Lisko have locked down Bengals. They're back to five days a week starting July 17th, next Monday. And they are five days a week all the way through the end of May. That's a long, long stretch. (laughs) FC Cincinnati, they are also in action. FC Cincinnati is in action. They were in action on Wednesday, yesterday against the New York Red Bulls. They are in action Saturday night against Nashville at TQL Stadium. Have a fantastic weekend. I'm on Twitter, Frankie underscore Natty with two N's and an ATI. Instagram, Alex Frank, and underscore. And then email, alex 3 frank at gmail.com. Looking forward to a fantastic week with you all next week. Hope you have a great weekend. I'm Alex Frank of Lockdown Bearcats. I'm, or Lockdown Bearcats is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Back next week, Lenny, to get to your Locked On Bearcats.